All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are with Michael again, and he was speaking on Saturn and Jupiter and Rahu's car transit. So now it's time for Punarvasu, <laughs> Rahu in Punarvasu. Sure. So we were touching on Punarvasu earlier, and I was stating that uh, Punarvasu is a chara and a chala. Nakshatra, which means it's moving and it's unsteady. I often like, in terms of explaining this to people, imagine like the concept of kinetic energy, right? So if we see a rock, we just think of a rock as being still. But there's some energy in there. And all you need to do to understand that is to pass by an area that says, beware of falling rocks, right? Because anything can set that rock in motion, right? So with Punarvasu Nakshatra, it's, it's, very unsteady energy, but it's energy that's building up potential. So it's nourishing your potential. It's also a Datu nakshatra, which is a mineral nakshatra. So it's all about supporting, supporting those things that are worthy of you sacrificing for. But you can't understand those things unless you take a good solid look at them. And some of those things you might not want to let go of. And that's the hard thing, you know, and that's, that's, more Saturn's function in this transit through Purva Ashada Nakshatra. It's making you take an honest look about those things that you need to let go of and those things that you need to hold on to. Here's an interesting thing. Purva Ashada, uh, Barani, Purva Falguni Nakshatra, all of those nakshatras, they're all Ugra and Krura Nakshatras, which means they're cruel and they're violent. So we think of Venus, we think of this nice, sweet, gentle planet no, <laughs> you know, um, and it's understanding that, you know, Venus is also the minister in how to live your life well, how to enjoy life. So in order to enjoy life, sometimes you have to be firm and get rid of those things that no longer nourish you. Because Purvashata Nakshatra is also a Mula Nakshatra. Mula Nakshatras are related to the plant kingdom. So the Mula Nakshatras, they always have a quality associated with them of nourishment whether we're adapting to get our nourishment or whether we're digging our roots in more deeply in order to get nourishment. So we're having to take a look at where we're adapting and go, well, I no longer want to adapt in that way. And equally take a look at how we need to more firmly dig our roots in and be honest and true to ourselves and those things that really are worthy of our devotion. As Jupiter transits through both Anuradha and Jaishta Nakshatra, it's, it's, it's going to make us perceive those clearly. Jaishta nakshatra is one of the nakshatras that's um, you know, connected to, to Indra. Uh, and interestingly enough, when you read Taitariya Brahmana, you see some different deity associations for the nakshatras. Uh, for instance, with Shatabhishek nakshatra, you don't see Varuna, you see Indra being connected to Shatabhishek nakshatra too. So whenever there's a nakshatra that has an Indra association to it, it's all about perceiving things clearly because Indra was the one who conquered his senses. So with Jaishta nakshatra, it, it, it's about seeing things clearly, taking a good solid look, seeing it from a higher perspective and understanding things. All these nakshatras, they tend to have a certain quality of that, right? How are they creating the differences? Well, Anuradha nakshatra is creating distance for you from those things that you're devoted to. It's going, you know what? Sometimes it's good to have boundaries in place in relationships. Sometimes if I like eating a lot of cake, sometimes it's, it's good to take a break from eating cake so I can understand how much I like eating cake, right? But you don't want to do that for too long because cake's really nice. Uh, Purva Ashada Nakshatra. Sometimes Purva Ashada Nakshatra brings us to these experiences of like having our ego challenge. We don't like that. But when we have our ego challenge, we have to like we have to cleanse our ego. And we have to recognize who we truly are. Usually our ego is cleansed when we're not being true to the soul. Right? So even though all nakshatras have a certain similarity, and what that similarity is, is helping you as an individual to understand how you and God are interconnected with each other. So they're all going to have certain similarities, but they produce those that one similarity in so many different multifaceted ways.
Okay, so I think if I were to comprise the entire transit of those three planets, it's understanding what you're wanting to nurture in your life moving forward in the next, you know, year or so, and what you're no longer wanting to devote your time, energy, and attention to. And sure, along the way, you may have to let go of some things, or perhaps even some people that are important to you. But you're doing that because you're moving in a different way, and they are too, and that's important to understand. I could talk about nakshatras forever. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and regarding this uh, punar, uh, this uh, purvasada, Saturn had already moved into purvasada. I mean, as per the the sidereal system, I guess, and then it again uh, went retrograde into Mula, and now. I think as per that calculation, uh, around 26 or 27, which is like maybe 48 hours, it will again enter Purvasada. So basically what I understood is, and what people have also messaged me that uh, whichever house has Saturn uh, rules in their chart, there's something very serious which they have undergone because uh, from last two years, because Mula is that energy which, as you said, plucks and it puts new things. And yeah, definitely. So, do you see Purvasada as this uh, uh, light of, or, or I would say, the ray of light or ray of hope? I would say <laughs> it's a ray of hope as long as you're willing to look at things. Okay. You see, because if you there's a lot of different associations with uh, the nakshatras, and a lot of people will go, "Oh, well, that's not you know from this source or that source, so that I don't take that, or that's not meaningful." But if you can understand. Um, tons of different associations. You're getting so many different perspectives on a nakshatra. And one of the um, connections with Purva Ashada nakshatra is a winnowing basket, which used to be used in ancient times for gathering grain and separating the wheat from the chafe. Okay. Right. So there's a, there's a saying that we have, you know, in the West, which is you got to separate the wheat from the chafe. It's probably not used as much anymore, which meant you want to separate the strong from the weak. But really what that's about is the shape of the wheat is the outer shell. You can't really digest it. Whereas the wheat is what you can digest. You see, so the shape falling away relates to that, um, that superficial thing in your life that's very surface oriented that you no longer really need. It doesn't serve you. But in going through that process, it's very ego destroying, you see? And so it, it happens in an unpleasant way. And we have to understand that this is an Ugra and a Kurura nakshatra, which is if you are willing to be firm with yourself and go, you know what, I recognize this isn't good for me, so I'm going to be really strong and go, no. Sure, you may experience some, some pain or some difficulty in your separation from that, but at the same time, it's the recognition of why you're doing it. And so if you recognize why you're doing it, then you're having more of that invigorating quality of Purva Ashadana Shantra. Because you're not carrying all this dead weight around anymore. Yeah. Imagine, imagine a warrior you know, going into battle like you know, wearing three suits of armor, right? It's going to be too much. You really only need one. Right, so you kind of get down to one suit of armor, and you're you're able to handle that battle a lot more effectively. And so, Purva Ashada Nakshatra, especially with Saturn there, will especially make you look at going. You know what? I need to just focus on what I can do, and what's really going to make my life better moving forward, and what's really going to make it so that my life is on many levels more enjoyable. But it does that in a very intense way sometimes. It depends on the strength or weakness of Venus in your chart. It's like uh, in your original natal bar chart, what's the strength of Venus? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. Because you see, and, and so here's the thing, right? There are different philosophies regarding the nakshatras. I tend to work with the philosophy that the... Um, positions of the planets in the nakshatras they take that position with them in every single divisional chart right so let's say you have let's say you're born with saturn in purva ashada nakshatra 
Well, if Saturn in one of your divisional charts is over in Leo, it's still going to be in Purva Ashada Nakshatra. Because nakshatras are an astronomical thing, you see? So that's my opinion. And other people, you know, have different differences of opinion and they do really accurate things with that. So I'm not really, you know, criticizing them. But we can understand like, you know, so many different things, like different areas of your life. Venus is going to be weak in some areas and Venus is going to be strong in other areas of your life. So if you have a divisional chart where Venus is perhaps weak, then, then Saturn, what Saturn rules in that chart is going to be a little more challenging. Whereas if in your Rashi chart, in Rashi chart kind of comprises the life path of the individual. So that's kind of as we're um, becoming more whole, what we're focusing our energy on. So it's a very vital chart. But the other divisional charts are equally very vital. But in understanding it overall, sure, you can look at that Rashi position. It's going to tell you a lot and help you to understand how you're focusing that energy overall on your life path. So to make it simple, just, you know, look at Venus in your, in your Rashi chart and understand like, you know, its strength, understand its weaknesses. That's going to determine um, on a, and equally Saturn, your own Saturn, understand that as well. If both of those planets are weak, it can be more of a difficult transit for you because it's how, it's how you relate to that individualistically. But an important thing to understand is that transits, really, you have to understand dashas because transits can only provide what the dasha provides for. And so they're happening within the confines of that particular um, dasha. And that's why some people will, uh, will say, I've got this Saturn transit coming up and like, you know, 28, 29 years ago, it created this in my life, and I'm concerned that it's going to create that. They don't always need to fear that, because if you're not in a dasha that's going to produce that same result, then it's not going to, it's not going to produce that same result. It will still create Saturn transit things, but in a different type of environment. And that's what's important to understand. And equally, how prominent or how... Um, not prominent, that is, is equally related to the dashas that you're in. Yeah. As well as the Shtakavarga, there's a lot of different things to take into consideration. But in just speaking simply with this, you can look at the strength or weakness of your own natal Saturn and your own natal Venus. Okay. And for Jupiter into Jeshta, we see Mercury and Rahu. Mercury. Mercury and also Jupiter both, too. And Rahu, you'd want to look at Rahu's dispositor in your chart the strength of that, because Rahu and Ketu are very prone to their dispositors primarily and planets they join in the Rashi chart secondarily. Yeah, especially during the period of those subperiods. But yeah, in order to understand that, you can, you can look at all of those things. Yeah, and one last thing I would like to uh, ask is like, because they say Punar, in, during Punar Vasu, I've also seen whenever Moon will transit Punar Vasu, that we always do some, at least on my side, that there are some things which we were doing, we again start doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's for short time or whatever it is, but something will always be there. It always happens, I have seen. <laughs> it's because Punarvasu, once again, a ray of light, right? So it will return to things. And interestingly enough, if you understand, if you follow the nakshatras in a chain, right? So Ashwini is that first spark of creation. Bharani is that cosmic womb that it needs to come into. Kritika relates to how the differentiation process is happening, right? That, so that's the soul, you know, having been born, you know, beginning to come into form, beginning to take on like certain understanding of who it is, uh, the truth of who it is, being purified of things that, you know, it's like the cosmic umbilical cord we're being given birth to. Uh, so then you have... Rohini nakshatra, which makes you begin to grow in a certain way. And then you have, I'm simplifying these nakshatras just for the sake of discussion. And then you have Rigashira nakshatra, which has this quality of taking things apart, putting them back together again, over and over and over again. 
And then you have Ardranat Shatra that goes, okay, I've taken all this apart and I'm putting it together again. Now I'm really going to focus on moving forward. Well, really, when you get to Punarvasa nakshatra, it's returning to a state that is much like Kritika on a certain level, where this whole differentiation process is, is coming into being again. It's going, wait, I really need to take another look at it. And that was something that would have happened previously in Kritika. And so once again, it's happening again. So it's like this, it's bringing you back to a certain point so you can nurture something again. It's probably the easiest way to explain it. Yeah, and generally I have seen that first it will go to Ardhara, then some way or the other I get some shock that day. Uh huh. <laughs> it's exactly. shock in a way that, like two months back when I was in India, I was in a place called Allahabad, which is now known with a different place where the Kumbha Mela and all this happened, big mm -hmm. gatherings. So there I was, and you know the river, the place where I was going, the boat. It was like I was because the person was driving the boat. He was drunk, and I was like, "My God, today I'm gone." It seems, and the currents were so high because there are two, three rivers which uh, join there. And yeah, such a shock, my God! I was like, I was praying to God, I don't need anything, just save my life. <laughs> And then I was like, yeah, so, you know, in Ardara, the shock you get and stormy, you know, so it's yeah, just rocking the boat. So you're going, no, I got to focus ahead. <laughs> yeah. But that happens with Ardra. It, it kind of jars you out of something, right? A lot of that depends on Rahu, but, you know, Ardra tends to have this very, um, I like to call it tunnel vision, right? It can be very focused on things. People, you know, like with planets in Ardra, they can be very focused on that particular planet, almost in an overly passionate way. But then comes the, you know, the collapse that tends to happen, you know. Anyways, amazing session it was on nakshatras and planets. And thank you very much. We will. Oh, my pleasure. We'll get back my soon pleasure. again. And for those of you... Uh, most of you are already subscribers maybe but if you have not subscribed then please go and subscribe to his channel he has an amazing channel and if you also want to do courses or book a consultation from him then you can also do that link also is there in the description all right okay so, thank you very much sir and we are very grateful that you have come uh, thank you thank well, you for having me on my pleasure yes thank you see you